Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord God. We're grateful to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. We come to uplift, magnify, and give him all the praise because he is so worthy yes. to be praised. If you witnessed the baptism on this morning, thank you, Lord. God is good.
of Jesus. Lift it high. Hallelujah. Glory to his holy name. Amen. Amen. It's the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is no other name under heaven and where earth by which men can be saved. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, we are glad. Amen. Uh, glad to be here today with you. Amen. In the presence of the Lord. Amen. The power of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, bringing us into communion with our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ and his Father. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's, let's give a hand clap of praise for this praise team. Amen. All these musicians. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, we also, let's, um, let's give a hand clap of praise. Thank you, uh, Brother Davis. Amen. Thank you for that prayer. Amen. Amen. Um, it is good to be here with you all. Amen. 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 Uh, it's a wonderful day. Yes, it is. Amen. It is a wonderful day. Amen. Uh, so glad that so many of you could be here with us on today. Uh, so glad that you stopped by uh, on today to worship with us. Uh, man, I, I give glory to my Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Uh, I want to say welcome, amen, to those who are watching us uh, online. Amen. You are welcome in this place. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, we are praying that uh, the worship experience um, that is good for us and that is good for all who are viewing as well. Um, good morning, Baptist Union. Uh, we had a, a blessing on this morning. Amen. I want to do a little bit different. We have uh, a number of things we want to do on this communion uh, day. But, um, we had a baptism this morning. Amen. 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 And uh, I want to go ahead and do this now. Amen. Uh, John Carter was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit on the third day of April, 2022, Baptist Union Missionary Baptist Church, Hope Mills, North Carolina, uh, Reverend Cream, but Pastor. Uh, Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we're buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. And this young man uh, came forward to be baptized, confessing, uh, being saved, amen, in Christ Jesus. Amen. We want to ask him to come forward and say, you know, give you this certificate. say thank you for your continued giving and your continued support uh, here at Baptist Union. Uh, we thank you so much uh, for anything uh, that you have given as the Lord has laid on your heart. Uh, we thank God for you. Amen. amen. It's by your sacrifices, amen, and the grace of God uh, that this church is going forward. Amen. amen. That he has kept us even through the time of this pandemic. Amen. He's caused us to thrive. Amen. Uh, so we give him glory and we say thank you to you. Amen. Uh, and also, um, amen. Also, I believe, Brother Carver, I believe you said uh, originally that you want to be baptized and you wanted to become an official member of the church. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Is Sister Q here? Yes. She, oh, bless you, bless you. All right. She's here as well. Amen. Um, she joined uh, some time back. Amen. 
uh, but we haven't officially given her the right hand of fellowship. And so we would like to give them both the right hand of fellowship. Let's, let's do that right now. Amen. Let's, let's do that right now. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Uh, all those in the congregation, you can stand at this time. Amen. And we just want to give them the right hand of fellowship. Just uh, give them a hearty uh, welcome. Amen. And uh, speak words of life over them. Welcome them into this body. Amen. Revelation. Revelation. Oh, 
right. chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Kind of picking up where we were last week. Starting at verse 7. And we'll read 7 through 11. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 1. Verse 7. <clears throat> if you have it, just say amen. 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 There we find the following. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and the patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in the book, send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, Smyrna, unto Pergamos, unto Thyatira, unto Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today to say thank you. Amen. Lord God, as once again you have gathered us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Father God, uh, because of the blood of your son Jesus the Christ, who paid for our redemption, paid for us to be redeemed from every curse, paid for us to be redeemed from all destruction. And for that, we want to say thank you. Thank you for allowing him to die in our place. Thank you for allowing him to carry our sins. Thank you, Father God. It was in your will and your heart, Lord God, that you would punish our sins in the body of your son. Father God, and not only that, but as you duly punished him, Father God, you didn't leave him in the grave, but you rose him from the grave and rose him with all power in his hands. Father God, we want to say thank you. Thank you for making a way for us to receive your spirit through the spirit of your son, Jesus the Christ, even the Holy Ghost. Father God, we want to say thank you for washing us for all of our sins. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us a promise and a new hope. We got the hope of glory. We got you living inside of us. Oh, Lord God, we want to say thank you for making us new creatures, Father God. We want to say thank you, Father God, for giving our families hope, Father God, because we know that we're not walking alone or just walking in our own flesh, but we're walking with you. Father God, we say thank you. Thank you for this living word, and we ask that you would breathe on it, that you would make it come alive before us. Please, Father God, guard my tongue and guide my tongue to speak whatever you see fit for us to hear on today. Father God, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. We pray in all things that the name of your son Jesus is lifted high right. in this place today. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The first and the last. Amen. The first and the last. Um, we're going through this uh, first chapter of Revelations, and I believe, beloved, this is where we're going to be. I believe in general uh, that we're going to be, uh, by His grace, uh, preaching 
through the book of Revelation. Amen. Amen. Uh, we may have veer off this way or that way according to the spirit, amen, and the season, uh, but I believe we're going to be here for a while. Uh, and we started on last week um, this really introduction into Revelation John is giving as he is writing this letter, just as we read uh, in obedience to, to Christ Jesus. He's writing this letter and he was ready to send it on out to these churches. Uh, and it's here recorded for us. And he gave his introduction, which is really, uh, if you, it's the introduction to the letter, and it's really the whole of the letter is, he's coming back. Amen. 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 He's coming back. Amen. 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 And on, on last week, uh, we, uh, we kind of ended there on verse 7, uh, where it says, Behold, he cometh with the clouds. And you remember that when... Uh, after he was crucified and resurrected and stayed with his disciples, who would become the apostles that we know, for 40 days, teaching them. Uh, we have, according to the words that we have read, uh, you can take a good gander that he was teaching them all through the Old Testament the things that had to do with himself. Uh, and teaching them of things to come. And after he spent 40 days with them, then he ascended before the day of Pentecost. Uh, he said, I know you don't want to see me go, but if I don't go, then you won't receive the comfort. Come on. Amen? Amen. Uh, because it, it, it's a good thing Jesus walking around, but it's a whole other thing Jesus living in you. Amen. 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 Lord, it was holy name. Amen. And so, after he spent 40 days with them, he ascended. And the Bible says he ascended in clouds. And there were angels there because his apostles, the disciples, were still standing there looking up. And they said, why are you still standing there and look up? He's gone. He's ascended. But he's going to come back the same way. Right. Here we see John uh, with this revelation that this is what it's going to look like. He's coming back in the clouds. Right. And every eye will see him, yeah. including those who pierced him. Amen. That's an obvious reference uh, talking to the nation of Israel. Because when he first came, uh, as a whole, the nation rejected him. Uh, obviously, there were some who received him, John says, in his gospel, as many as received him, God gave them the power to become the privilege to become the sons of God. Amen. 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 Uh, but nevertheless, uh, as a nation, they rejected him. The Lord knew that it would take place, and it had to take place in order for him to go to the cross. Uh, but even after the cross, and after his resurrection, and after the pouring out of the Holy Ghost, and after great works of the apostles, that's what Acts is all about. Uh, as a nation, they rejected him, and the result of that was destruction. And he says here, even those who pierced him, those who led him to go to the cross. And I share with you, Zechariah tells with us, think about it now. As a result of their rejection, they were given 2,000 year period of chastisement. That's a long, 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 yeah. long time. Uh, amen. And not to have the joy uh, of knowing him as there for them. Uh, but nevertheless, watch this. In the end, when he returns, they're finally going to have that moment. And if you think about it, things are going to go very swiftly. We talked about you how it says that these things come when they happen. They're going to unfold very quickly. Uh -huh. And if you think about it, when these things get to rolling in the last week, Daniel's uh, 70 week gets to rolling. The, that is the last seven years before he returns. Things are going to be moving in motion. So many things are going to be happening in this earth. Not the least of them, which is the Antichrist begin ruling. Uh -huh. 
But watch this, at the same time that the Antichrist begins ruling is the same time, uh, according to the scripture, as much as he's shown us thus so far, that that will be the time for the second exodus. That will be the time when uh, the nations of Israel are gathered from the four corners of the earth where they have been spread and they will be gathered together in the wilderness where they will be kept from the Antichrist Amen. for that three and a half year period. But, but, but they'll be in the wilderness. And then when he comes, you have what the church knows as the rapture, where we're caught up together to meet him in the air. But immediately as we're transformed in the twinkling of an eye, the Bible says he comes down with his feet on in Jerusalem uh -huh. to fight the very last battle, the battle of Armageddon, the fight that the great fight that is finally going to cause him to take over rulership over the Holy Land of Jerusalem. And finally free the nation of Israel from all the other nations that are warring against them. What I'm saying is, if you think about it, it's action, 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 action. But Zechariah says, once the battle is over, then it says the nation of Israel will finally be gathered, standing in the midst of Christ Jesus. And it says they will behold the one who they pierce. Right. There will be... Once all the dust of war settles, mm -hmm. it's actually, it's, it's the first time that, if you will, the nation as a bride is reacquainted with the groom. Mm -hmm. And it says, as they look at him, it says immediately, it says, all of them are going to start to cry. It's the same thing that happened when they were regathered uh, from Babylon and brought back into the land of Israel, Judah. Uh, <clears throat> they rebuilt the temple and they picked back up the word of the law. They saw the things that God has recorded in the law, how they should be living, what should have taken place. And when they looked at it, it says they were torn. Half of them, they were all crying. Half of them were crying uh, you know, in remorse of what had taken place and then half of them were crying out of joy. Glory to God, things are as well as they are. Same thing is taking place then. That's what that is about. And then it says, not only the nation of Israel, but it says, and all the kindreds of the earth, they're going to see him too. And it says they are going to wait because of him. And I'm going to leave that alone for right now. Amen? Amen. Yeah. He says I'm coming like a thief in the night. He says I'm coming at a time that you don't, you won't be expected. And it says that many people are going to be fooled and deceived because the end times are about deception. And when he does return, it's going to be a lot of people going to be surprised. He says, I am Alpha and Omega. Mm -hmm. That's simply, uh, so in the Greek alphabet, that's the first letter and that is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. If it was in Hebrew, that's all it would be, the first letter and the last letter. And he is saying, I am the beginning, I am the end. Mm -hmm. He even says it right there, he goes on, he says, I'm the beginning, uh, I'm the beginning of all things and I'm the ending of all things. Right. And he really means it. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. 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 He's saying right here in this uh, apocalyptic scripture, this, this revelation, this revealing about his second coming, and he's reminding everybody, he says, I am the beginning. John says, in the beginning was the word of God, and the word was with God, and the word Amen. was God. Amen. 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 And there is not anything in this place, there's nothing made that was not made without him. Amen. 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 Same one who's writing this said that. Amen. 
Amen. And Paul co-signs them. Paul says, whatever there is in this world, he said, whether they be principalities, whether they be dominions, whether they be nations, he says, all these things were made by him and they were made through him. And it's by him that all things consist. In other words, he is God. Amen. 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 Jesus emphatically letting it be known, look, look, I am. Amen. Now he said it once or twice uh, during his earthly ministries. He did. He said it once or twice, uh, but you don't see it uh, very often. Amen. Most of the time, he's like, don't tell nobody. He would heal folk, and, but don't tell nobody I did it. Yeah. Even the disciples, he asked them who they thought he was, but even after they proclaimed it by the power of the Holy Ghost, he said, don't tell nobody. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, Because it must be he had to be covered, his his glory had to be covered in order for him to complete the assignment that he was set to do. Right? But this here is a revealing of Jesus Christ as he truly is. This is a revealing of Jesus the Christ with all of his glory unconcealed. No, he's standing before John and John can see him as he he says, I am the beginning and I am the ending. Yeah, he began all things. Uh, If I go according to what my Bible says, I know what we're taught to to say in uh, in certain circles, but according to my Bible, he was the beginning 6,000 years ago. Uh Y'all can believe what you want to believe. He was the beginning 6,000 years ago, and here in this revelation of his second coming, he says, I am also the ending. You realize that word ending is nowhere else in the Bible, but here. That's powerful. That's saying something. He says, yes, I was there. I created the heavens and the earth. The Father did it through me. I am the beginning, but I'm also the ending. Because when he comes, he's he's coming for redemption. He's coming to redeem back the nation of Israel. He's also coming to redeem all those who believe in him. He's really coming to redeem the entire earth back unto himself. Fully in his possession, fully under his dominion, he's going to create a new heavens and the earth. And as such, he's letting them know this is the end. A psalm says, this is the end of the world as we know it. It's going to be made over again because he's literally going to be ruling from the earth. Amen. Amen. He is the one which is. He is the one which was from eternity. He is the one which is to come. El Shaddai. The Almighty. Amen. Almighty God. I, John, who am your brother and your companion in tribulation. Paul reminds him and says, look, I'm your brother. I'm going through the same things that y'all are going through. What are the things that they were going through? Well, you get a hint right here because you know that he's telling them, I'm writing to you from the Isle of Patmos, where I was exiled by the Roman governor. They sent me away from the mainland. They sent me out because by this time, John is about 90. He's an old man. By this time, brothers and sisters, this is written uh, approximately around 95 A.D. In other words, what I'm trying to share with you is uh, it's been about 30 years. Watch this. Peter has already been martyred. Paul has already been martyred. And just a few years after they died, uh, the Jews in Jerusalem kick up against the Roman army in various sieges. They rebel against the Roman occupation because the Romans wanted to overtax them. They wanted to tax them so bad, they came up, they marched into the temple and took 
things out of the temple and took it to Rome. And that was too much for them. And they kicked up and they began to rebel. And that rebellion lasted about four years, but it ended in 70 AD. 70 AD is when Rome finally destroyed all of Jerusalem. And the thing that Christ promised, prophesied would take place, which is that they would go into captivity, that many of them would die, that there would just be a remnant left, it took place. I'm saying this to share with you, this was the state when John is writing. These things have already taken place. And now he's got a new Emperor. Now there's a new governor over him, and he's persecuting Hebrews and Christians alike. They're throwing them into jail for no reason, not because of anything that they did, solely because they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And John says, I'm your partner in this tribulation. I know what you're going through. You're going through a hard time. You're being persecuted because of your faith. But I'm here to tell you something. Even though I've been banished into this island of Patmos, let me tell you, I've been spending some time with the Lord. And I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And the Lord came to me Matter of fact, I was with him, and all of a sudden I heard this voice. It was like a trumpet. It was like the trumpets that blow so loud and long uh, way, way back when God delivered us out of Egypt and brought us to the foot of Mount Sinai and God himself descended on the top of the mountain and, and, and presented himself before all us as a nation the very first time the trumpets blew Lord knows everything shook there was thunder, there was lightning and I'm here to tell you that's what it was like when he just talked to me and what's he going to say? He says, I am Alpha and Omega. I am the first and I am the last. Amen. Studying the first and the last is interesting. We go through the Bible in the Old Testament. Uh, first place that I saw it uh, was dealing with David. And at the end of David's life, written there, I believe it's Chronicles. And it says, tells them things about David, and it says, and the things according to David, according to his first and his last, aren't they recorded? And so you see it different times, different kings in the Bible, at the end of their lives, it says, we have recorded before you their first works and their last works. And it goes on like that. But here comes Isaiah. And all of a sudden, Isaiah is no longer applying it to the lives of kings. All of a sudden, the Lord been dealing with Isaiah. And now he hears God speaking. And God says, I am the first and the last. It's no other place. It's in Isaiah. 44, 41, 44, and 48. And in each of these chapters, beloved, God himself says, I am the first and last. In other words, you already seen it recorded, the first and the last works of a man's life. Well, God says, I am the first and the last. In other words, I gave life to every one of those kings. And when it was time for them to be received, when it was time for their ending, I was their ending. I was their beginning. I was their ending. You hear Paul talking about we ought to focus on Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. See, he is our beginning. He is our ending. He says, I'm the first and I'm the last. You ah, got me worked up like the most... But if 
if he says, I'm the first and the last, this is something that people were very familiar with at that time. Uh, the nation would be very familiar with Isaiah. It would mean something. That's, that's really my prayer that we get as we go through this book of Revelation. When things are shown, when things are spoken, uh, they are going back. They're making allusions to things that have already taken place before. Why? Because the things that have already taken place are getting giving full meaning to what is being said. Amen. And so when he uses the phrase first and last, if you really want to get an understanding of what he's saying, then you need to go back and look at those other scriptures, see what they meant back there. And I won't hold you long, but I will read to you out of Isaiah 41. He said, keep silence before me, O islands. Let the people renew their strength. Let them come near. Let them speak. Let them come near to judgment. Who raised up a righteous man from the east? Called him to his foot. Gave the nations before him and made him rule over kings. He gave them as dust to his sword and driven them as stubble of slow. He pursued them and passed safely by the way that he had not gone with his feet. Who has done this? Calling the generations from the beginning, I, the Lord, the first and the last, I am he. He's talking about as the Judah comes to the end of their 70 year captivity, when it's time for them to be freed up again, he raised up Cyrus. He raised up Cyrus to give the word that they should be free, that they should be loose, that they should go. And not only did he, he did that, watch this, he did that by force. He gave Cyrus power over all the other nations so that they would bend over and acquiesce to what was being said. That is, free them. But this is a picture of what's to happen in the end times. God says, I'm the one who can raise up an authority to cause all the Hebrews that are scattered and that are oppressed to go free. Didn't Jesus say, I came to loose the prisoners, to let the captives go free? He did that in the spirit, but in the end, he's doing it literally. Causing his people to go. He says, but you, Israel, you are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham. You who I have taken from the ends of the earth. I called you, pulled you from chief men. And I said to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you. I have not cast you away. So at this time, they felt like they were cast away. But he tells them, I haven't cast you away. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. Do not be dismayed. I will strengthen you, yea, I will help you, yea, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against you shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. They that strive against you, they will perish. You will look for them, but you will not find them. Even those that contended with you, they that war against you shall be as nothing, as a thing of nothing. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying unto you, Fear not, I will help you. Fear not, thou worm, Jacob. In other words, at this time the nation felt as low as a worm. In the midst of all the other nations. He says, thy worm, Jacob, do not be afraid. I will help you, says the Lord. I am your redeemer. I am the Holy One of Israel. This is the first and the last. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'll read this last one and we're through. Yet now, O Jacob, my servant Israel, whom I have chosen... Thus says the Lord that made you, that formed you from the womb, I will help you. Fear not, O Jacob. Do you see that again? He's talking to a people that seem a little afraid. He's talking to a people that are oppressed. He's talking to a people that feel like they have no power in the midst of this world. And he says, fear not. I'm the one that formed you from the womb. I will help you. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. I will pour water on him that is thirsty and floods on the dry ground. 
I'll pour my spirit on your seed and my blessing on your offspring. He's not talking to the folk that he's taught standing in front of right there. He's talking about their descendants. He's talking about their children way on down the line. I will pour out my spirit on your seed and I pour out my blessing on your offspring. And they're going to spring up among the grass like willows by the water courses. Watch this. One will say, I am the Lord's. Another will call himself by the name of Jacob. Another shall subscribe his hand unto the Lord and surname himself by the name of Israel. He says, in these last days, whoever these Israelite descendants are, they're going to start calling themselves Jacob. They're going to start calling themselves Israel. Thus says the Lord, King of Israel, once again, his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first. I am the last, and besides me, there is no other. Amen. Amen. The last one, I'll go on and paraphrase. I know y'all tired. Is in 48, but I'm telling you where it is. You go read it for yourself. And in chapter 48, once again, he's talking to the nation of Israel. Watch this time. This time. So look, he's already said, fear not. He's already said, uh, I'm able to raise up somebody who will cause you all to get free. We just read, uh, we just read where he said he was going to pour out his spirit on their descendants. And now here comes a rebuke. Here comes a chastisement. Here comes a warning and a word of correction. Because he told them now in uh, chapter 48, he says, look. I told y'all I was going to do these things from the beginning. Uh -huh. Who else? He says that all over. Who else can prophesy like me? Who else can tell you the things that are taking place from the beginning? I can because I'm the first and I'm the last. I've seen your beginning. I see the ending. And since I'm outside of all that time, I know what is to take place. And what is to take place is according to the words that come out of my mouth. And he says, so I told you ahead of time, watch this, so that you, he's talking to us, he's talking to believers in him, so that you would not, those who are professing to serve the Lord Jehovah, and yet you have idols, and yet you're serving other gods. I told you what I was going to do from the beginning so that when it comes to pass, you will not go and say your idol did this. You will not go and say your false god did this. No, I am the one who did it, and I told you ahead of time so you would know when it happened, it was me. He says, I am the first and the last, he says, I've chosen you uh, in the belly of affliction. I've refined you through affliction. In other words, he's been molding, shaping this people by way of affliction. But now that time has come to an end. Remember, he says, I'm the first and I'm the last. I know the beginning of your affliction and your chastisement. I know the end. So these things that I said, I'm the first to last. I'm able to raise up somebody and cause you all to get free. These things where he says, I'm the first and the last. Where he says, I'm going to pour out my spirit on your descendants way down the line. These things where he says, I am the first and the last. And he says, I'm doing it. I'm telling you so you will not be deceived. You will not ascribe any of this goodness that takes place. You can't give it over to Lord have some of these religions. Other religions. Anything outside of this book. Your cultural practices that you want to grab onto. These false gods and goddesses that are being lifted up. These different, oh Lord have mercy. Basically, Paul says these are demons. 
idols. Behind these idols that are trying to tempt and trying to grab and pull my people to turn them away from me. Right. You hear it now. You hear it in these days. Folk are trying to talk about this book like if we in this book, something wrong with us. Why would you steal? Why would you still call yourself servant Jesus when you know what these folk use this book to do to us? I know it don't sound good, but that's what the folks are saying today. If you're listening, they're saying, and they're telling you, that's the reason why I'm picking up these rocks. That's the reason why I'm picking up these crystals. That's the reason why I'm burning this and burning that. Come on, pray. That's the reason why they are lifting themselves up. Watch this. You think I'm, the, I ain't right. about no color thing. I'm trying to preach what this Bible has said and the people they're talking about. Now, there's other folk that are about this color thing, and they're trying to deify your color and try to talk about how you are gods and goddesses because you got a certain level of melanin in your skin. The truth is everybody got melanin in their skin if you're a human being. Some got more, some got less. But regardless of the amount that you got, that don't make you a god, that don't make you a goddess. The, the god of this Bible says, I am the first and the last, and beside me, there is nobody else. And this is the one, beloved, that is talking to John, and he's telling him, look, I'm the first and the last. Everything that you heard Isaiah said I was going to do is finally time for me to do what I said I was going to do. Get ready. Wake up. Wake up. Get prepared. I'm coming like a thief in the night. You don't know when I'm coming, but you better wake up. Because I'm soon to come. Don't let the devil fool you. Don't say you God is slack concerning his promises. A day is like a thousand years to God. A thousand years is just one day. It's only been two days according to God. It's just been like two days to God since he held a hold of Israel nice and close. But he says, I'm still your groom. I'm still your husband. And I'm coming back for my bride. Only thing y'all didn't realize was my bride is made up not just of you, but anybody else who would believe on my son. Anybody else who would get my son's blood all over them. Anybody else that doesn't mind being baptized. In the name of Jesus the Christ, y'all are my bride. And I'm coming back for you. So get ready, get ready, get ready. I'm through. There may be one who does not know Jesus and the pardoning of your sins. If you have not received him as your Lord and Savior, you don't know him as the one that will wash all your sins away. Won't you receive him today? Is there one? Maybe there's one watching you. And maybe the Lord is pricking your heart. Would you receive him on today? If you would, then pray this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I believe you are the son of the living God. I believe you were sent into this world to wash away all my sins. I believe you died. I believe you rose again. And now, Jesus, I am a sinner. And I'm in need to have you as my Savior. Be my Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Please give me grace and begin to teach me how to walk in ways 
that please you. The Bible says, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, let us prepare for communion. Let us prepare.